All right, so what I'm going to do now, unless someone has questions. Yes? Is the review online? Is the, review online? the review sheet is online. The uh, questions I'm going to be giving you are not online. Why? Because I have actually used these questions. I may use them again. I do not want my questions. I do not want my entire page of questions to be out there in the cyber world. Now, if you want to take the trouble of typing it in, taking a picture and then typing it in, at least you're working for it. <clears throat> All right. So this is how we're going to do the review. Let me see if I can. What I like to do, instead of sitting there and standing up here and lecturing at you again, since I've been doing that the entire semester, we need a different approach. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you actual questions that I have used in the past. I may or may not use them in your exam. And you guys get to answer. You get to figure it out. And if you really have trouble, then I'll pull up the PowerPoints and show you where to find them. All right, so question number one. And yes, this means you guys have to answer the question, because I'm not going to answer it. Okay. Which of the following is not true of imagery as described in Crumb's approach to modeling the mind? See? Oh, you're quick. I don't even have to tell you the, the, tell you the different options, and I'm getting answers. But we have to vote. OK. A. Imagery can only be in the form of visual pictorial representations. B. Mental imagery is different from verbal imagery. C. Imagery is very easy for humans to understand, but difficult for computers to understand. D. Imagery contains a great more detail, excuse me, de a great deal more information in a concise manner than, than can, I guess I can speak sometimes, than can sometimes reasonably be described otherwise. Now, before I ask you to vote, there is a very important component of this question. The not. the not. Right there. We have a tendency to skim over the not. Do not skim over the not, especially since I don't always remember to capitalize it. So it may not be capitalized. I try. So we are going to vote. Remember, we are looking for what is not true of imagery as described in Crumb's approach to modeling? Who wants to vote for A? About a third of the class. Who wants to vote for B? A couple of you. Who wants to vote for C? Nobody. Who wants to vote for D? One person. Okay, for D, let me remind you of the beautiful, adorable picture of the, uh, the baby in the hospital and the cute child. You know, the most adorable ones you will ever see. How much information was in that? A whole lot. So that eliminates D. So you have to, you know, remind you of how adorable my children are whenever I can. Is there anyone who wants to change their mind? Well, it just so happens that the answer is A. Remember we talked about imagery. We tend to think of imagery as visual. It's not just visual. Remember when I talked about the steak and the lobster? I have to remember that. I remember that. It makes me hungry. That's also imagery. Are you ready for the next question? Someone's taking a picture, so let me know when you're done. <laughs> Hold on, he's still hold it, holding it up. Wait a second. Oh, wait, you can see the whole second question. Why am, I, where, why am I waiting? Okay, question two. According to Gestalt theory and figure ground segregation, the what holds more memorable association than the what? And the what is seen as being in front of the what. So of course, what are our options? 
ground or figure. <coughs> For a question like this, what I really recommend that you do, because it can be a little tricky even if you know this, take the answer, plug it in, and see if it's correct. You can even break it in half. Breaking it in half where, okay, here we're talking about one aspect. Here we're talking about another aspect. Let's start with the first aspect. According to Gestalt theory, figure ground, excuse me, and figure ground segregation, the what holds a more memorable association than the what. So in this case, we would look at the first two. So if we want to narrow it down, it's either A and B or C and D. Now, do you want to vote or should we go through the whole question first? Okay, I understood none of you. <laughs> you want to vote first or just do the whole question and vote? Okay, I heard vote, but I'm not sure which voting it is. You want to vote for the whole question first? Okay. Who thinks that it is A, ground figure, ground figure? Nobody. Who thinks it is B? Ground figure, figure ground. Nobody. Oh, one person. Who thinks it's C? Figure ground, figure ground. All but like three people. D, figure ground, ground figure. Nobody. Well, at least you've narrowed it down to two. All right, so according to Gestalt theory, figure ground segregation, the what holds more memorable association? The figure, then the ground. And the what is seen as being in front of the what? The figure is in front of the ground. Boy, you guys have got it. Awesome. Yeah, this is usually a hard question, by the way. Other, my previous students have gotten it wrong. Well, you have to remember that when you're taking an exam, you're all nervous, right? And you have to relax. All right, three. Can I undo? Oh, we haven't talked about this. We'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. That, by the way, is from the beginners, experts, and, excuse me, beginners, intermediates, and experts lecture. Actually, let me just talk about it really quickly. This is an example of the type of information you need to know. It's applied. Can I undo? What is this control for? And I forgot how to import. I'm asking you what type of user would typically have these types of questions. Now, I don't expect you to know the answer yet since you have not seen that lecture. But it tends to be the intermediate. But watch the lecture. But this is, will just give you an idea of the type of question. So let's go to four. Now we get to the, what some students consider the more difficult questions, but that students tend to do much better on than the multiple choice. On average, I found that students tend to miss approximately half of the multiple choice questions. Yeah, do so much better on all the other questions. And remember, I give partial credit. All right, doing two tasks simultaneously when neither is automatic will degrade your performance on one task. This is called what? And the person who told this to me when I was coming into class is not allowed to answer. Everyone else has to answer. Sorry? It is part of that lecture. Anyone? I know there's one. I know there's one person in class who knows this because they told it to me as I was walking in. I'll give you a hint. It starts with the letter I. Interference. Interference. And no, I will not tell you that it starts with the letter I during the exam. <laughs> but yes, interference. And by the way, this just so happens to be a direct quote from my slides. Here's my other subtle hint. All right, here's something from 
our lecture today. Write an example of when a mechanical age representation should not be translated verbatim to the digital world. Now here's the tricky part about this question. It is a multi-part question. For questions like this, people will lose the most points because they forget to answer part of it. Always remember, if the answer is not there, I can't give you points. I do not read your mind. Explain why and provide two improvements you would make in the digital product. So, this has three parts. Give me an example. Explain why. Provide two improvements. So you can use the office typewriter? You can use the typewriter, absolutely. So I'm going to let you spit it back at me. Give me the example of the typewriter. The scroll. The, the, scroll, manual, scroll. the manual scroll on the typewriter. Why don't you want, now you have to say, why don't you want to use that? Right, because it's more difficult than just scrolling a mouse. It's more difficult than just scrolling a mouse. It's less efficient. It's less efficient. You can use some other things, like it's. Harder to learn. Now, what else do you need to do to, to answer this question? Two improvements. two improvements. What are two improvements? I'm sorry, what? You can have the page that scrolls from one to another seamlessly. Anything else? Right, the margins are already set for you. Another, another example would be that, I don't know how many of you know this, if you double click, it'll actually take away the margin, margins so that you see just your text all nice and smooth without the margins. Yes? You can also change the font like easily. It's much more easy, yes, it's easier. The font, the colors, you know, all these improvements to using a digital product over a typewriter. Great example, thank you. Yes? Professor, I don't understand why you wouldn't want um, to tra translate, right, um, the typewriter to the... Well, it's not translate type, it's a literal translation. So remember when we talked about when you put a piece of paper into a typewriter? You put there and then you have to scroll with that big button? We would not want to have a big button on our computer to scroll paper. Make sense? Yep. I mean, it's a silly example, except I bet there was someone who thought about it. Actually, I should find an image. There was a, I found an image once, I couldn't find it afterwards, of someone who actually made a joke out of it and they put a typewriter knob on the side of their monitor. It's actually pretty funny, I thought. All right. Six, what has changed about blindness? Define it and list one example of a, excuse me, of a design implication in this phenomena. Notice again, this is a multi-part question. What would you do first? What would you write down first? Put a definition of change blindness. Does anyone remember what the definition is? one certain aspect of what we're seeing, so what we consider as the ground, like the background, we don't really notice if something changes in between, like in the video, when they change the curtain and the monkey, the well, door. gorilla passes by. And, you know. Right, and there's some very important components of that. So, to repeat what you said, what it is is that when we are focusing our attention on something, we have a tendency not to notice something else that may change in the ground, in the background. It is very important that you talk about this in association with what we are paying attention to. It's not a random, you just don't notice changes. Yeah, I just don't notice change. It's you don't notice a change 
in things that you are not paying attention to, where you have a, you have a singular locus of attention. You gave us a great example. The example was in the video where we were watching the players bounce the ball and we had the gorilla come through. Yeah. Right? What was the other thing that we didn't notice? The color of the curtain changing. And there was one other thing. Yeah, the girl left in the middle of the exercise. Any of those would be a good example. Design implication. What do, we, what do we sometimes not notice? Because if we're paying attention to something else. Sorry? I'm asking for a design implication. When if you're designing something, what's the design implication of change blindness? Is that like the solitaire when you're shuffling the cards and it's loading in the back of the That's something else. That's something else. The, the shuffling of, the, of the, the cards in solitaire is something else. Yes. What do you, if you go to a website, you supposed to look for the map. You don't pay attention to anything else but the map. I'm sorry. It. Like if you if you go to a website, you're supposed to look for the map of the campus, and you only pay attention to that and not anything else on the website. That's close. What you're talking about is the locus of attention. So for the, I guess, purposes who, of those who may not have heard, you were talking about like when we went to the the web page of the campus and we were looking for the map, and so we missed other information that was there. That's your singu that's that's your goal directed singular locus of attention. Yes. When you're at a website and there's like um, on the side panels there's ads that constantly are changing. Or like in Facebook, like while you're scrolling down the ads at the at the right change. The more you scroll down, like when you scroll down a whole page, they, they change completely. You know? And we do tend not to notice. That actually is an example. That is a, and so that is an example that could have implications for, I guess, more ad revenue that people try not to talk about because they still want to get ad revenue. Now, there's another one that we talked about in class about logging in. Oh, yeah. uh, but it says on the top that something isn't right since we're focused on the logging in part. We don't have to... Right, so if we're focused, if we're trying to log into a site, for example, and we're focused on the login button and there's a mistake and you put it kind of somewhere where we're not paying attention to or you're not looking at the top of the page even if it's still in your visual field because of change blindness you want to put things where we are already looking make sense I hope that's a yes <clears throat> All right, for the following images, state the Gestalt law of organization that is most applicable. Be sure to include a name and description or justification. So let's look at this one up here with the stars. I'm sorry? Grouping, well, that's what we're doing with it. That is what we're doing. Law of proximity. The law of proximity is one of them that you could apply to this. Um, law, of similarity. Similarity. law of similarity would be more applicable. I would want you to describe, and by the way, if you did put either of those, I would give you full credit, if you describe it appropriately. So if you put the law of similarity, how would you, de how would you describe it? How would you justify it? Uh, the stars are the same in size and uh, same color, same color, same same color. Color. right so we have stars that are colored in right and stars that are white and we tend to group those that are similar to each other so the stars that are that are colored in is one group the stars that have the white inside we see as another group for a question like this, I strongly recommend that after you write it down, go back and read it literally and see if it would make sense.
What about this one? Closure, right, closure law of, con of continuity, either of those would, would, would be acceptable. How would you describe that? Choose one. How would you describe it? Right. We, ha we have a tendency, since we, are look we look for patterns, to close up the lines. We see it as continuous. To so interpret it as a whole. I love putting pictures in my, in my, uh, in my exams. That's my other subtle hint. <clears throat> and, okay, I think that was it. Oh, no, one more. So I may give you a nice, another nice picture. Hold on, where did the text of this one go? Hold on. Oh, it is part of this one. You're right. I jumped on the other page. All right, what do you see here? Figure and ground. Figure and ground. Now, justify it. The pop up in the picture is a figure. And... Right, so this pop up here would be your figure, which we tend to pay attention to. The rest is ground, or the background. All right. Now this actually, I'm sure, is the, this is the last question. How are we doing on time? OK. All right. Given the information below and what we know about humans and visual structure, how would you present this information to users in a manner where it can be quickly and easily scanned and comprehended? Now, what am I looking for here? I want you to take a blob and make it easily scannable. What would you do? Bullets, break it off into sections. What else? Less words. Use indentation. Use, in, in, use indentation. You can use different font or, fonts or different font effects. You can use different colors, except on your exam, you're going to have one color. Statement together because it's like um, where um, the first line it says you are booked on United Flight 237, and then right after the next statement, it kind of like breaks like half of it off, and then the next statement it breaks half of it again. So it's kind of like yeah, so some things that should go together are kind of broken apart. Some things that are together you can break apart to make it more easily scannable. Now, for this, I actually want you to give me an example. I actually want you to take this information and turn it into something that's scannable. You have to actually apply this, not just describe it. Here's my other subtle hint. This is an exact copy from my lecture slides. Yes? Uh, can you do it like, um, for example, a graph? Like in a like in a table? Yeah. You could. All right. So you guys can do this, right? Okay. Those are all the questions that I pulled. And we're almost out of time anyway. We have a whole five minutes of class. Are there any qu other questions? Yes. So you wanted us to describe it and also. For this, you don't have. Yeah, for this, you do not have to describe it. For this, you actually have to reformat it. Yes. For the test, you have to bring something like scratch or whatever. Like what? Like scratch or pen or pencil or whatever. Well, you have to bring a writing implement. <laughs> yeah, you can use pencil or pen. I recommend a pencil because you can erase, but it's up to you. Yes? Yeah, can you go back to uh, number six and can you just explain that example you gave us about the login button? Hold on. Number six. Okay, change blindness. That's basically where we don't notice changes 
when we are focused on something. So when we are logging into a web page, actually let me see if I can, well let me explain it then I'll pull up the, the, um, the slides. When we are logging into a web page, what is it that, that we're focused on? We're focused on type in my username, type in my password, click log in, or for filling out a form. What we're focusing on is we're focusing on that login button. We expect to log in. Now if there's a mistake, and you go and you put, even if you put it in red and you put that, say, there's a problem at the top of the page, we may not notice it because we are focused on the, the, um, on the login button. A, a better solution would be you take that error message and you put it where we are looking. You put some indication that there is an error in the area that we are focused on. 